Let's wrap up U.S. history talking about the recent president, starting with Lyndon Johnson. Johnson had the Great Society. That's where he wanted to help out the poor, the disadvantaged, and minorities. Johnson, of course, was famous for signing into law the Civil Rights Act of 1964. In addition, Medicare comes out at this time to help out older Americans with health care. You can see a continuation of populism, to progressivism, to the New Deal, and into the Great Society all have in common an increase in the government helping out the people. Unfortunately for Johnson, he would also be remembered for the war in Vietnam. As the war went on longer, public opinion in the United States shifted against him. After his presidency, the Pentagon Papers were published. This showed that the American government had escalated the war for years and misled the public. The United States did not want this to be published. However, the court case of New York Times versus the U.S., was won by the New York Times as the Supreme Court said that it was freedom of press. Richard Nixon, a Republican, became the next president of the United States. He took over in 1969, the year of the moon landing. Nixon had a lot to do with the Cold War. If you recall from an earlier video, he had SALT, strategic arms limitation talks. That was when the United States, as well as the Soviet Union, limited the amount of weapons they had. This was a part of detente, a foreign policy that was the lessening of Cold War tensions. He also supported ping-pong diplomacy. That meant when people went over to China, ping-pong players, that tried to bring about better relationships with Mao Zedong and the Chinese government. Also for Nixon in 1973, you have the OPEC oil embargo. That took place after the United States supported Israel during the Yom Kippur War. There were inflated oil prices at this time that hurt the economy. Nixon also pulled the United States out of Vietnam with a ceasefire in 1973. That same year, we have the War Powers Act. That said that the president could not go to war for longer than 60 days without congressional approval. Nixon did a lot with foreign policy. However, he would be remembered for the Watergate scandal. The Watergate scandal occurred when in 1972 there was a break-in at the Democrat National Convention. Nixon said he had nothing to do with this break-in. However, tapes would say otherwise, as there were many recordings showing that Nixon was not in the dark about the break-ins. Nixon tried to hide behind what is called executive privilege. This is where the President of the United States does not need to disclose everything in fear of letting go of some national security. However, the Supreme Court said otherwise. In the court case of the United States versus Nixon, the court ordered that Nixon had to surrender the tapes. Rather than being impeached, Nixon later resigned from office. Gerald Ford was appointed vice president after Vice President Spiro Agnew stepped down. Ford would famously pardon Nixon of any potential federal crime and said it was for the best of the country that everybody just moved on. Jimmy Carter became president in 1977. He was a Washington outsider and peanut farmer. There was a lot going on during this one-term president for the Democrat. For example, there was a lot of stagflation in the economy. That's when you have low growth, high unemployment, and high inflation. To make matters worse, in 1979, the price of oil skyrocketed after the Iranian Revolution. So Carter was fighting an energy crisis as well. They thought about increasing the amount of nuclear power. However, the Three Mile Island power plant partially melted down during this time. So people started to fear nuclear energy as well. Regarding the Iranian Revolution, the United States was in a tough spot because as the Shah of Iran was overthrown, American diplomats remained hostage for 444 days. Carter did his best to get them rescued. However, a helicopter tragically crashed. The hostages would not be returned until after he left office. However, there would be some good news for Jimmy Carter in the Middle East. In 1978, you have the Camp David Accords. That brought some peace between Israel and Egypt after years of fighting. In the late 70s and early 1980s, you see a push by a group called the Religious Right or the Christian Right. This new conservatism put an emphasis on family values and religious teachings. They became a big voting block for the Republican Party, as groups such as Jerry Falwell's Moral Majority gained a lot of popularity at this time. Ronald Reagan would reap the benefits of the Moral Majority as he came into office in 1981. A Republican, Reagan wanted to trim down the government. In addition, he wanted to cut taxes for the wealthy. This was called Reaganomics, or trickle-down economics, where all groups would benefit if the rich's taxes were cut. 
Such supply-side economics would hopefully lead to more investment and job creation. Ronald Reagan, a Washington outsider as a governor and former actor, also didn't help labor too much as he broke up the air traffic controllers strike. In addition, he cut a lot of jobs at the EPA, or the Environmental Protection Agency. Speaking of the environment, there's a lot happening during this entire time period as we see the beginning of an environmental movement. It starts in 1962. That is where Rachel Carson had a very famous book called Silent Spring. It helped lead to the end of some chemical pesticides such as DDT. Shortly after, we have the Clean Water Act, the Endangered Species Act, and the Clean Air Act. The dark cloud over the Reagan administration was the Iran-Contra scandal. This is where the United States government secretly sold weapons to their enemy Iran, and then the money they got from those weapon sales would be funneled to anti-communists in Nicaragua. Reagan escaped any wrongdoing in this scandal. There was some concern for the environment in 1989 when the Exxon Valdez ran aground in Prince William Sound, Alaska. It was a terrible oil spill and disaster. The president at the time was George H.W. Bush, a Republican and one-term president. He supported the Americans with Disabilities Act, which would protect those with disabilities the same way the Civil Rights Act was intended. Bush had great popularity for a time because of Operation Desert Storm. This is where the United States removed Iraq's Saddam Hussein from Kuwait. The U.S. was attempting to protect its oil interests. However, Bush would suffer from the economy, as there was a recession at the end of his term. This led to the rise of Bill Clinton. Clinton, who was a Democrat and baby boomer, became president in 1993. Clinton favored health care, gun control, and allowed anybody to serve in the military as long as they kept their sexuality a secret. This was called Don't Ask, Don't Tell. If you were gay, you were not allowed to serve in the military until this law. However, years later, it was not seen as a favorable law, as everybody should be allowed to serve openly, according to Barack Obama, so Don't Ask, Don't Tell would be repealed. Clinton also signed into law NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, which lowered tariffs between Canada, Mexico, and the United States and offered freer trade. This law would eventually be reformed during President Trump's administration. For the most part, it was a peaceful time during the two terms of Bill Clinton. However, NATO troops were sent overseas as ethnic cleansing was going on in the former Yugoslavia. Republicans would surge in 1994 and take over the House of Representatives. Newt Gingrich became the Speaker. Gingrich supported the impeachment of Clinton. Clinton was impeached for obstruction of justice regarding a relationship he had with a White House intern. However, he was not convicted by the Senate and remained in office. The House of Representatives would help pass the Defense of Marriage Act at this time. That said that marriage was between a man and a woman. The Supreme Court would later overturn this and open the door for gay marriage. That happened during the Obama administration. George W. Bush was next. He's a Republican, and he took office in 2001. There was a very controversial election between him and Al Gore that took place in 2000. It wound up going to the Supreme Court, where the Supreme Court sided with Bush and ended a recount in Florida. The world would change very quickly for Bush, as on September 11, 2001, a terrorist attack killed thousands of people in New York and Washington, D.C. This led to the creation of the Department of Homeland Security that looked to protect America from terrorism. Also at this time, you have the Patriot Act. The Patriot Act allowed the government to spy on suspected terrorists. Although that limited civil liberties for some, it was supposed to protect the larger numbers of people. After 9-11, you have the War on Terror. There are wars that have fought simultaneously for Bush in both Afghanistan and Iraq. In Iraq, Saddam Hussein would be removed from power and later executed. Bush left office amid a terrible financial crisis, perhaps the worst one since the Great Depression. This involved mortgage foreclosures, bank failures, and a credit crisis. Barack Obama became the first black president of the United States, and he took office in 2009. There were many stimulus packages that Obama sent through, and there was also a push for Obamacare, or government health insurance. Though not supported by Republicans, the Affordable Care Act would be found constitutional in 2012 by the Supreme Court. The war on terror continued under Obama. He helped carry out airstrikes against a group called ISIS in Iraq. In addition, special forces killed Osama bin Laden, who was behind the 9-11 attacks. Donald Trump would take over in 2017 as a Washington outsider. 
He promised to make America great again. He was for reforming the tax code. In addition, he wanted to bring back American jobs from overseas. He believed in America first. This happens during a time of globalization. For years, American jobs had been outsourced to places such as China and Mexico. This helped to bring down costs. However, there were critics about globalization who said that American jobs should stay within the country. Trump did support that and some companies did come back. The economy and stock market boomed under Trump until 2020 when there was a new virus called COVID-19. There was a lot of uncertainty in the economy as thousands of people were dying of the virus. This meant that people would work from home. A new vaccine came out to help people get back to work. However, there was still a lot of uncertainty and social distancing. At the same time as COVID-19, there was a lot of unrest in the country over racism, and there was the growth of a new organization called Black Lives Matter. Although there was a lot of peaceful protest at this time, there was also a lot of unrest and property damage. In the wake of these protests, there would be a new federal holiday called Juneteenth that would be commemorated every year to celebrate the ending of slavery in Texas. Donald Trump was the only president to be impeached twice. The first time was because the House of Representatives said that he used his position to get election assistance from Ukraine. The second one was for his role in an insurrection on January 6, 2021. Trump had refused to accept the election results in 2020 where he lost to Joe Biden. His followers stormed the Capitol. However, Trump would not be convicted by the Senate and finished out the final days of his term. After, Joe Biden became president of the United States, a Democrat, and he became the oldest person to ever be president of the United States.